Good morning, America. Hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, I had a few thoughts on my way to work this morning about uh, our flag and the national anthem. I know I'm a little late to the game, but I just wanted to talk about those two things for a second. You know, there's a lot of people that are kneeling and protesting the flag and the national anthem and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine. That's their, you know, it's their right to do it. But, you know, don't do it disrespectful because if you do, you're walking on the graves of the people that died so that you could do that, you know. But here's my thoughts. You can say a lot of things about this country. You can say a lot of things about our history. You can say a lot of things about the law enforcement and military that we have. Um, and that's fine. Again, you know, it's America and we're free. Just maybe kind of be mindful of the people that have died to make us free. You know, may not agree with the cause, but nevertheless, those people stood up for the cause so that you could protest whatever the heck you want to protest, which is fine. But anyway, just to kind of get to the point, the flag of the United States is not a flag that represents uh, slavery or police brutality or human suffering or racism. It doesn't represent that. So if you're, if you're protesting the flag because of that, you're barking up the wrong tree. What the flag and the national anthem represent is what we as Americans aspire to be. I mean, no one's perfect. There isn't any one single person on planet Earth that is perfect, you know? I keep thinking about all of the times people are, you know, they're talking about, you know, racism and white privilege and all of that kind of stuff. You know, I grew up pretty dirt freaking poor. I sure didn't feel privileged when I was growing up, you know. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people that feel the same way as me of all different colors and races and backgrounds, you know, which is fine. But in the United States, unlike most other countries, you can do whatever you want to do. You just have to put your mind to it and do it. Figure it out. I'm damn near 50 years old, and I still don't feel like I've succeeded at much of anything. But it hasn't stopped me from trying, you know. There's a lot of things in this world I want to do. I've been trying to write a book for like 20 years now. And uh, so far, in 20 years, uh, I've got you know, a handful of things to contribute to the book, but it didn't stop me from trying, you know? I've been playing guitar for like 25 years, and I'm no good, you know? I like picking the strings, but I'm absolutely no good at it. But it doesn't stop me from trying. At the end of the day, if you want to do something and you don't accomplishment, accomplish it, uh, nine times out of ten, it's your fault that you didn't accomplish it. And that's what... Is great about America. If you fail, try again. If you fail again, try again. The difference between someone that's successful and someone that isn't is their resolve. Their resolve to be successful. People that are successful, it's not like they didn't fail. Everyone has failed. But the flag is what we aspire to be. We want to be a unified country where everyone we're all Americans and we're brothers and sisters and mothers and dads and friends and neighbors that's what the flag represents it represents freedom and the ability to do what you want to do life liberty and the pursuit of happiness it doesn't represent you know racism it doesn't represent you know law enforcement abuse it doesn't represent any of that thing that's not what the flag is and the national anthem, same thing. You know, that song, it isn't white or black or it's not Asian, it's not Indian, it's not Native American, it's not any of that stuff. It is a song that represents what we aspire to be. It, it, it represents the unity of the American spirit. It represents us, you know. We're a melting pot. We are the truest melting pot of a, of a civilization anywhere in the world. We have 
every nationality you can think of living in this country. I, there's, I don't know this for a fact, but I would venture to say there's probably not one country anywhere in this world that doesn't have at least one of their citizens or former citizens living in this country. You know, we are the melting pot. You know, we, we have a lot of people that talk about, you know, immigration. You know, our immigration system is broke. There's no doubt about it. It shouldn't take years and years and years and years to become a legal citizen in the United States. I got a, a, a close friend, you know, that I used to work with, you know, down in Salt Lake. And uh, it took him like 16 years. I don't know why, but it took him like 16 years of being a permanent resident alien before he could get his citizenship. You know, shouldn't be that way. Um, you know, and here's another thing. If, if America is such a terrible place, okay, why are there millions upon millions upon millions of people every year trying to get into our country? You know, if it's such a terrible place, why aren't those million peop millions of people circumventing the U.S. and trying to get into Canada? You know, why aren't they going to uh, Germany or China or any of these other countries? It's because even at our worst, we still provide hope and opportunity, you know? So I hope you guys have a great day. I would seriously urge you to consider maybe putting some brain cells towards the true nature of the United States. You know, I, I heard some people uh, in our, well, in a state government talking about, no, no, who was it? It was uh, Tim Kaine, I think, said that the United States invented slavery. That guy's off his rocker. Slavery has been around for thousands of years. The word slave comes from the word, the base word Slav, which means uh, European, basically. You know, it doesn't mean white, black, or whatever. But man, that guy's off his rocker. I mean, we may have had some slavery here, you know, which is terrible. And we always talk about it. And we always talk about, you know, people that own slaves. But we never talk about the people that died to free slaves, you know. So I think if you're going to be fair, it's okay to talk about the people that own slaves. And it's okay to, you know, talk about all the former leaders of our country that had slaves and all that kind of stuff. But if you're going to do that, <clears throat> why don't you mention the people that died for slavery, that died for civil rights and that kind of stuff. You know, and another thing, as I think about slavery, <clears throat> you know, which is a big topic right now in our country. And I know I kind of got, I kind of got off the, you know, subject a little bit, but that's okay. But as I think about slavery, there's a lot of things in this world that seem good at the time, but then later on we go, oh, maybe that's not such a good idea, you know? So at the time slavery was being enacted, the United States was not the only country in the world that had slaves. There was countries all over the world that had slaves, and that was an accepted practice, you know? Much like today, we know that cigarettes cause cancer. We know they're not good for you. They cause a, you know, heart disease and emphysema and all of this other stuff. Livers to stop, you know, working and, and kidneys to stop working and, you know, that kind of stuff, right? We know that that's bad for you and there has been a big push to get rid of it. But, you know, a hundred years ago, nobody knew that. Nobody thought about it and people smoked all the time. They smoked pipes and they rolled their own cigarettes and they smoked weed and all kinds of shit, Right. But today, moving forward, we know that it's not good for you. So most everyone is, is stopping or trying to stop, you know. And at some point, there'll be no such thing as cigarettes. Which, the segue there is this. <clears throat> we don't have slavery in the United States. Now, some people are going to argue that when you get up and you go to work and you make a paycheck and you're basically a slave, but that's not necessarily the truth. You're free to do whatever you want to do. You can go to work or not go to work. You can live here. You can go somewhere else. You can whatever, right? But there are countries around this world that still have slaves. 
So much like cigarettes, we know that it's wrong. We know it's not good, but there are still countries that do this. And eventually that'll be good. It'll be gone there too. But anyway, <clears throat> hey, I know I kind of deviated a little bit. Oh, well. But anyway, I love you guys. All of you, everybody that's watching. I don't care if you agree or don't agree. Like me, don't like me, whatever. You're human. And, uh, you know, that makes, that makes a difference, you know. So, think about our flag in a new light today. Think about our national anthem in a new light today. Think about it in a way of what it represents that we want it to, we want to be, what we aspire to be, not things that have happened. It doesn't represent our past. That's what makes the flag of the national anthem timeless. It doesn't represent the past. It represents the future. It represents what we aspire to be, not what we are currently. Anyway, like I said, love you guys. Stay safe, stay alert, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.